Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter 2 continuing with talking on the test management. As a part of this we continue with 2.3 risk based testing and other approaches for test prioritization and effort allocation. As a sub segment we have covered already the part 1 of this. Now part 2 we are continuing with the risk assessment. So of course you remember from the previous tutorial that it consists of four stages risk identification, assessment, mitigation and management. As a part of this tutorial we'll be getting into the assessment part. Once you have identified a particular risk be it a project risk or product risk, the more important thing is to get into the detail of that and assess it for determining the level of risk. Now level of risk is something very important to be determined when you have identified a particular risk because the level of risk will determine how exactly you can mitigate it. Now what exactly level of risk consists of? A level of risk is a combination of two different parameters about the risk. Number one is the likelihood, second is the impact. Where impact stands for the severity or the criticality of the risk, whereas the likelihood stands for the probability of that event to happen. For a quick instance, for example, assume that you're talking about a risk, product risk of uh, changing the password with any kind of application. So maybe, you know, you're talking about your Facebook, Gmail or any other application and assume that there is a feature which allows you to change your password at any point of time. And that option is generally called as reset password or forgot password, right? Now, the only feature of this particular option, uh, only functionality of this particular option is to click on that or when a user click on this option it sends an email authentication or a link to your email id where you can click on that and validate yourself or verify yourself and change the password right now the only option is you click on this button and this sends a link to you what if the risk we have identified in this particular feature is that that the reset link is not sent to the registered email id now that's a very critical risk because if this link is not sent, of course the user will not be able to change his password ever, right? And in the person who is using, the user who is making use of this product may opt out of this product saying that uh, this is quite difficult, you know, I don't see a mail at all, probably even after 48 hours or maybe 72 hours, I don't see an email to reset my password and I cannot use my account if I need it. Probably I forgot my password or so. Now the impact is very high here that the user will maybe opt out of your product or stop using your product. Likelihood is another constraint which you should measure but here the likelihood is basically the probability of that event to happen which completely relies on the frequency of use. Now you know that how often you go to change your password. Any general user will often not change their password or quite often not forget their password right? So the likelihood can be rated as low. That's how you basically assess any particular risk which you have identified as a part of your risk identification process. And level of risk is determined by two parameters, uh, likelihood and impact, where likelihood is probability and impact is severity. Now this analysis or this assessment can further be done to finally determine the level of risk in two different ways. One is the quantitatively approach or qualitative approach. Now quantitatively measurement of the assessment or determination of the level of risk basically means that you work on the number systems. You use a scale between 1 to 5, 1 being the lowest, 5 being the highest and similarly you use this scale for both of them. Number scale for uh, likelihood as well as impact. Now assume that you got a particular risk with likelihood 3 and impact as well 3. Now in terms of quantitative, you basically multiply these two values. So 3 into 3, 9 will give you a priority number. If someone else, for example, there's another risk which is a priority is, sorry, the likelihood is 4 and impact is 5. Then 4 into 5 is 20 and it has a higher priority number. So based on that, you will prioritize the risk by multiplying these two things and we call it as quantitatively prioritized or quantitatively assessed for the level of risk. On the other hand, qualitative assessment is quite similar, but 
But here we rather look more on the impact side that what kind of impact it will be for example financial loss or loss of life or any kind of impact on the product which will let the people not work on it. So you know percentage basis or based on the outcome basis if you do that you call it as qualitatively analyzed or assessed about the level of risk and of course the factor will remain the same probably you add the likelihood and impact or multiply the likelihood and impact but in terms of the overall outcomes the way it is being used instead of using a particular number scale system so that's the major difference between these two analysis further to continue and talk about the risk assessment here we are talking about the various factors which influences the likelihood for product or project risk the simple, you know, very common factors which influence this likelihood is complexity of technology, which is very common these days, and the teams, of course, because if you don't have a good collaboration between the teams, it would re lead into a lot of conflicts. Personal and training issues, personal issues are one among them, and training. If you're not trained well, then of course you don't know how to do the things, so it will basically have both the parameters like product and project risk. Similarly, conflict within the team, contractual problems with the suppliers. Suppliers, you have to be very careful because not every time they agree to your deadlines and maybe they can be easily swat away. So you just have to uh, make sure that you have strong uh, contracts with them. Geographical distribution of team, that is communication gap, legacy versus new approaches. You have been following an approach for years long and suddenly something new pops up. Then how do you cope up with that change? Uh, tools and technologies, weak managerial or technical leadership. If you do not have a good manager, in fact, we are talking about test manager right now. If you're not a good test manager, you are not able to help your team to talk about such levels and assessment of that. Uh, time, resource, budget, and management pressure. Of course, that's always there. Lack of earlier quality assurance activities, high change rates, high earlier defect rates, and interfacing and integration issues. So these are all the factors, simple and very common generic factors, which basically influences the likelihood of an event or risk to happen. Now, on the other side, the impact upon the occurrence is the severity of the effect on the user, customer, or the other stakeholders. And factors influencing impact includes frequency of use of the affected feature, criticality of the feature to accomplishing a business goal, damage to the reputation. So these are all impacts, which basically, you know, lets you decide what exactly is going to happen. Loss of business as well, potential financial, ecological, or social losses or liabilities. Civil or criminal legal sanctions as well could be a part of it because you might be talking about financial things or you're talking about banking application, healthcare application. So every country has different way of dealing with them. Loss of license, probably you may lose your license of whatever product you're making. Lack of reasonable workarounds could be another reason. Visibility of failure leading to negative publicity and of course safety of the user. If you're talking about safety critical products like automobile, airborne systems, then of course the human life are very important. So that's where we consider all these factors. So you basically put everything together in terms of quantitatively or qualitatively uh, assessing of a particular risk item when you identify them. What? Well, that's all from this particular part of this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.